Beat switches. That thing in rap songs where the beat switches. As an example, this one that I made in FL Studio just for this video. Come on and dance now. This producing stuff is too easy, man. Why am I making videos full time when I'm this good at music? I'm surprised I haven't covered this yet, considering how much I love beat switches when they're done right. And today I'm going to share a bunch of examples with you where it was done the rightest. This isn't a comprehensive list of every single one that I like, but they're just a bunch of my favorites that slap good and slap hard. Basically, if the switch makes me make a face sort of like this, and the rapper kills it on both beats, then I'm gonna include it in here. This is CDTV Productions, live from a new setup, and let's get right into this video because there's 13 songs to talk about. Get the scrap if it happen to blow, it makes around sounds. Pussy cat on my lap, push it back and go to town. I still remember how hyped I got for the Forever Story when Jed dropped this single. He'd been killing features for so long and then he dropped this absolute bumper. This complete slapper? Who else is rapping the word indubitably? One thing I love about Surround Sound is how it uses the exact same sample for both beats from Ms. Fatty... Ms. <laughs> Ms. Fatty? Both from Ms. Fat Booty by Most Def, but they're used slightly differently in each one. I they came back around like a nigga selling cracking pounds. I got a bag now, but it's nothing to brag about. Sorry in advance for my bro. They whip a nigga ass. What you whipping up? Whoa. Shit in the back if you looking for the dope. There's not many other songs on here that do that as far as I can tell. It helps keep the whole thing super consistent, but each part sounds different enough. Crystal, DJ Scheme, and Nuri work some magic on this one and Jid laid his flows down perfectly on each part. Plus 21 Savage over that first beat was immaculate and Baby Tate's part sounded nice as hell too. Just an incredible single overall, with a nice beat switch. <laughs> And immediately after that, I thought it was only right to include another song where both parts of the beat sound unique while incorporating the same main sample. This one being The Loving Touch by Keith Mansfield. <laughs> I never do my team green, make the team green like the Celtics, the ones that ain't making it overzealous. Roll me your blood so I'll forget it, but the minute details look so vivid, went through a lot of shit in the last year. Now hey, you might say that this video is about the hardest beat switches, and walking doesn't really fit into that category, as it's more of a chill song rather than something that slaps really, really hard, but you would be wrong, my friend, because this beat still slaps really really hard. I don't care what anybody says, the way that that second drum beat drops in after the tempo increasing and then Denzel just fires out that energetic hook, that fits my definition of hard. Not gonna say pause after that one. Now there's nothing wrong with having multiple producers on a song with a beat switch, as long as the end result is good, that's the main thing that matters, but I just find it extra impressive on Walkin' that the whole thing was produced by Cal Banks alone, and he pulled it off perfectly on both beats. Got Iraq, pistol pulling private, Shh. Chris I think I got the gully curse. Underground, underrated, y'all keep digging for answers. If I put at least one person onto this song, or songs I guess, through this video, then I'll be happy. Prime by Royce the Five Nine and DJ Premier is one of the most entertaining lyrical rap albums that I've ever listened to, with stellar production and laser sharp lyricism. And Wishing is one of, or two of the best songs on it. As I've said, there are two versions, one with Common and one with Black Thought, with the latter one being my favourite, but both of them are great and both of them have the same hard-hitting beat from DJ Premier. It's got that tried and true method of a slow, gripping beat abruptly switching up into a faster, harder-hitting beat and the contrast is so damn perfect on here. <laughs> I don't really care, nigga, I'm getting in. I got a C-63 V, Twizzy Benz, I'm sitting in. Yeah, I flew with the team. Fuck a translator, I speak fluent to team. Y'all holding shit down with a selfie stick. I'm flying some shit out of Harvey Nichols and Selfridges. The first time I heard it, I felt like that dreamy bull guy because I was about to blow. And before you call that out of pocket, just listen to the song yourself and tell me you don't feel the same way. Now she cause he know me, I been counting up the bag. Yeah, yeah, I get to load a bag, I'm fucking up years. If there's one rapper who had a flexible flow that could work great across two different beats in one 
song, it was 2019 Roddy Rich, man. And that's exactly what happened on the first track from Please Excuse Me For Being Antisocial, produced by ATL Jacob and Billboard Hitmakers. It kicks off with a softer, more emotional, piano-based beat with no drums that Roddy matches perfectly with his vocals, before it very quickly transitions over to a new beat with different piano keys, a fast-paced plucked instrument, and drums just skipping all over it, it instantly brings the energy right up. It's masterfully done and Roddy cruises over it so well. It does the whole chill instrumental into harder instrumental thing pretty well, but we can't talk about that type of beat switch without talking about one of the most iconic examples of that next. What's on my grind and now I got what I deserve, fuck nigga. Hold on, wait a minute. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this song really set a trend for having this type of beat switch. Where the song starts off more emotional and heavy, and then halfway through switches to something that slaps so brutally hard that you don't even see it coming the first time around. All of this is produced by The Beat Bully, and he perfectly reflected this whole dreams and nightmares idea with his production. With beautiful pianos and strings during the dream segment, and menacing piano stabs, choir sounds and a plucked instrument during the nightmare segment. It's pulled off perfectly and Meek elevated it by matching his vocal tone and lyrical content to each segment in just the right way. Definitely one of the absolute best ones on here. It's iconic and went on to influence Roddy Rich, like I just mentioned, Cardi B and more to try out their own Dreams and Nightmares style intros. Yeah. With the gang, I'm a rebel, I make treaties with the devil I don't see this song get talked about all that much when it comes to the hardest beat switches conversation That conversation we all have with our close friends and family But I think this one absolutely slaps A lot of the production had a very similar sound on Trippy Red's Trip at Night album But this one managed to stand out from the pack just a little bit By switching up halfway through from a brighter, more melodic sounding rage beat Into a darker one with pounding kicks and heavy 808s. Like I said, I don't really see this one get talked about a lot, but that beat switch just replays through my head sometimes. I think it goes so hard. The first beat is pretty solid, but man, it's the second one that makes the track a highlight for me. Yeah. I still remember after the first time that I listened to this song, I replayed the hell out of it for like at least a month after. And a huge part of that is how great the switch is from the first beat into the second. I like what this one does in particular with the sort of mini transition before the change. With some smooth sampled piano keys playing before the drums just snap in and we move right into beat two. And man. Those drums are nasty as hell. That 808 kick with the skipping hi-hats and the razor sharp snare is so good, man. Both parts use what sounds like a reversed melody behind the drums and it sounds great on both parts. Flex up, why my check? Body necklace, I wrecked it. Holes in my backseat. I sign my paycheck in cursive, unworthy. Holes in a fifth, always talking about my fashion. An effortlessly energetic song and a great intro for the album that it's from. Ain't running from nothing, but haven't lost sight of the finish line that we've been running to. Little business, Detroit fucking too. My thoughts is all black, yeah, and back to the roots. Oh man, this is another great one. It's one where the rapper in question, Big Sean in this case, keeps continuously rapping as the beat switch happens behind his vocals, and I absolutely love that. The beats don't really transition into each other, with the first one just sort of cutting off before a few seconds of silence, and then the second one builds up, but it's Big Sean's voice that acts as the connective tissue between the beats here. Another thing that makes it so great is that I'd be perfectly happy if each beat just had its own song. The first one taking a more introspective tone and the second one being more trap focused, but them being put together does make Lucky Me a special song. And the way Sean flows over that second beat is ridiculous. Man, Lucky Me, I was diagnosed with a heart disease at 19. Could barely stand on my feet. So you talk to me nice and I realize I'm insulted. I bet on myself, ain't no way my hands hold. What's the limitation? 
validation, fuck your validation. I don't gotta figure God flow, gotta renovate it. I'd say the first half has the best lyrics, and the second part has the most energy, which makes perfect sense with the tone of each beat. And the combination makes it one of the more memorable songs from Detroit 2. From the motherfucking bush killer. <laughs> I understand that time is running out. I talked about this song before in my first controversial rap lyrics video, but I didn't touch too much on the sound of the track because the lyrical content was the focus for that video. So I just wanted to drop it in here to say, man, this slaps. All self-produced by Paris too. When you think of beat switches, you probably don't typically think of 90s rap songs, but this one has one of the hardest ones that I've heard in my life. Like the first beat is good, but the menacing guitars and faster pace of the second one is wild. I hope you think of how we done us when he laid away and get the feeling of the peeling from the other side. Cause your program still ain't fair. So who you wanna blame for the hate that hate made when P led off and pigs get sprayed? Just had to show some love to this 90s banger right here. Definitely give it a listen. <sighs> Seven producers on this one. That's a lot of moving parts for one track, but man, do they make it work. It's funny because I'm pretty sure I used to think that the second part of Stargazing was the slightly weaker one on the track, but now I actually think I might prefer that section. The vibes with the first beat are immaculate, of course, but man, the dizzying up-tempo sound of the second one is definitely something that hits more for me now. Yes, the song has that one particular lyric that's aged very terribly now, but from a sound perspective, it's something that you can tell that multiple talented people really put some work into crafting. Just a beautiful soundscape for all of this track that I think does a good job of almost feeling like you're going through a roller coaster of sounds. I know Travis has some really good beat switches on Utopia too, but this still remains one of my absolute favourites from him. <laughs> This one is just such an experience to listen to. The beat does not only switch once on Slowdown Turbo, there's like three or four different beats across the four minutes that this track goes for. It opens up with a sample straight from the unreleased song Red Lamb by Crow Youth with I think a couple of elements added in there just to make it sound a little bit more full. Then about 50 seconds in, it switches to the first beat that we hear Rich Brian rap over. Then, less than a minute later, it switches up to a small bridge from Bacon, and then after that it switches into the second beat that we hear Rich Brian rapping over. But it's not done yet, as the beat starts speeding up and getting faster, as do Brian's vocals over it, before his voice fades out and then comes back in as some drums kick in over this faster paced version of the instrumental. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then it switches one more time for a short but beautiful instrumental outro. It definitely does a lot with its runtime. You can just tell an insane amount of work went into the composition of this track, and to have this many different parts to the beat while making all of it sound natural and making all of the transitions sound like they make sense is truly impressive. Come home the kids miss you, this is how the music should sound when you have 9 plus producers on a track. This song is an absolute banger, but before I talk more about it, just a quick update on my discography ranking video for future. I think The Wizard is my number one project from him now. There's just so many great tracks on it. One of those is F and N, and it just has such a clean beat switch. I'd be happy enough if the song had that first dark trap beat for the entire thing, it's the perfect backdrop for Future's voice, but it definitely wouldn't be a song that stuck with me as much if we didn't get that quick switch while Future was repeating the song name a few times. It has a great build up, and the drums on the second beat are 
are great. They just hit so nicely. It's very cleanly executed and it elevates FNN from being a good future song to one of my favorites from The Wizard. Every time I'm in the street, I hear yuck, yuck, yuck. And we'll close it out with an iconic banger from the one and only Kendrick Lamar. This is an opinion that people rarely agree with me on when I say it, but personally, I actually think the second part of Mad City is better than the first one. Of course, the first part, produced by TDE in-house producers Soundwave and THC, does still go hard, and it is what made the song so popular, but that second part with the storytelling and the increased intensity produced by Terrace Martin... That just goes even harder to me. The dramatic strings sampled from Chains and Things by B.B. King just set the tone perfectly for Kendrick's incredible, harrowing verse, and it's just one of the most memorable moments from Good Kid Mad City overall. And then the outro of the song with the varying pitch shifted vocals from Kendrick is just perfect. Don't get me wrong, both parts of the song are amazing, but it's the switch into the second part that really makes the song a special one and a very important moment for the storytelling of the album. So those were my picks and now I'll ask, which beat switches do you love the most? Let me know down in the comments below. Click here on the screen if you love seeing my twin reacting to really bad music, and much love to all my Patreon supporters and channel members over here. With special thanks to Griffin Up Church, I am Regent, KWG13270, Lucas1123, loads of numbers around here, and not Vimpan.